cool. I can do a resume. Yeah. Oh, look. Google has some templates. I can use that. Oh, wait. Um, I'm not applying to be a cashier. How to make a nursing resume. I've never done a resume before. Do I put in clinicals or leave it out? Because the internet's giving me mixed messages about that. I don't have time for this. I have exams. I'm Quinn from NurseUp and I am a registered nurse. So lately, I've been helping some people with their nursing resumes and because of their successes, I want to share it with you all so that you can nurse up your resume. There is a key difference between regular resumes and nursing resumes. And nursing resumes are so significant because they are the first impression that your hiring organization will have of you. It's also the piece of paper that your hiring manager is going to have when they're interviewing you. So having something that stands out and is of good content is so, so, so important. Try to keep your resume one page long. As you can see, this is my resume. And how I did that was I played with the alignments and I made two columns so that I can broaden um, the different contents that I would need in my resume a little bit more. You can do this in Microsoft Word. It's a little bit trickier, so I don't recommend it. Um, and you can also do this in Google templates. They have some free resume templates that already have built those two columns in for you. And you can just input whatever it is that you want to. And when I say consistent, I mean consistent in the way that your resume is laid out, such as spacing, such as punctuation, grammar, um, your list from the most recent to onward. It has to follow in a consistent way. For example, some of the things on my resume that I keep very consistent is I always have the names of the organizations um, bolded, followed by um, the location and also the dates that I've attended or I've worked there. And um, those are going to be italicized. So that follows the format every single time. If I'm also talking about another content category such as education versus experience, I would make it um, a different color so that you know that this is a separate thing that I'm talking about. Also, I use, I don't like to use periods at the end of um, my content. So there will be no periods there. And I also use an active voice, even though it's been five, three, two years that I've um, experienced this. For example, uh, for my last job at this said hospital, um, it's been two years, but I said that I directly assisted in da 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 da, and my next bullet point is I responded to and facilitated care. So in that way, it's past tense through and through and through. In your resume, do include these categories. Education slash awards that you might have received. Experiences, that includes professional. And if you don't have any professional experience, then you can use your nursing experience, such as your clinicals. Skills, languages, certifications, and extracurricular involvement slash volunteer activities. Now, it doesn't really matter whether or not you list your education first or if you list your experiences first, but 
If you are a professional nurse and you have been for a couple of years, then I would put my professional experiences before my education. However, some people are fresh out of college and they don't have any professional experience. So in that case, I would put my education first. Since education is such a small like amount of space and you want to really elaborate on your experiences in clinicals or not um, and highlight your accomplishments there. Don't, don't, don't just list responsibilities of your jobs. That's something that anybody can go online and in your job description, copy and paste. That is not what you want to put in your resume. You want to highlight how you went above and beyond. You wanna highlight your accomplishments. My favorite thing to do is using my previous evaluations from instructors, from supervisors, and extracting that and putting it in my resume because that's evidence of what I achieved in that role and how I went above and beyond. If you are a practicing nurse, how you can incorporate your accomplishments is simply by asking yourself, how did I contribute beyond my roles and responsibilities? Such as whether or not you were involved in your unit council, if you were part of any educational initiatives or trainings on the new EMR, or if you are a preceptor and how many people you precepted. In that way, that gives a glimpse of the qualities that makes you a great outstanding candidate to that position that you're applying for. And that's it folks. I really hope this video helps. It just basically gives you an outline of the certain critical components that a nursing resume should have. And as always, subscribe, share with your nursing pals if you find that this is helpful. And if you have any further questions, just drop a comment down below this video. And good luck with everything. Let me know how it goes.